Greetings. This is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. We uh we are May 3, 2022. Um had kind of a landmark thing happen last evening late and it's pretty much a uh significant uh topic of discussion today in regards to Chief Justice John Roberts has confirmed the leaked opinion of the court from Justice Samuel Alito, and it is authentic. And the majority first draft by Justice Alito sets the stage for each individual state to make a decision on abortion. Currently, the vote appears to be five. That'd be Samuel Alito, Clarence Thomas, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett, two, three, Stephen Breyer, Sonia Sotomayor, and Elena Kagan in dissent. Uh, Chief Justice John Roberts' vote has yet to be determined as of the posting of this article. I've seen some conflicting things. Some people say he is in the dissent, and some people say he is still deciding. Um, and, you know, the, the fence has been erected around the Supreme Court. There have been protests all days from both all day from both sides of the issue. They've been taking place throughout the day at the court. Uh, some comments from... Um, the paper written by Justice Alito um, from the opinion of the court. We hold that Roe and Casey must be overruled. It's from Justice Alito. Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. Its reasoning was exceptionally weak, and the decision has had damaging consequences. And far from bringing about a national settlement of the abortion issue, Roe and Casey have inflamed debate and deepened division. Again, that's from Justice Alito. Now, for those of you who want to read a complete or read the complete, quote, opinion of the court by Alito, click on this link below. It's a PDF. Click to access CODIS, SCOTUS initial draft. And for those of you who want to see the original story, here is the link from Politico. This is where it all got started. So, you know, and the point of this is not to debate abortion. Um, the point of this is what does God think about Roe v. Wade and just the concept of abortion? What does God's word say about it? And there's plenty there. We're going to cover that. Um, you know, and I admit this up front, this topic is an absolute lightning rod. This is an adult conversation. Passions are running hot, will continue to run hot, have been hot. And I would ask that uh, please keep all comments to be thoughtful, respectful, and considerate of others, even if one disagrees with another. With another, I mean, it's going to happen. We're, we're all different. We've all got little different angles on how we see things. Uh, we're not always going to agree. Um, and to brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, please be mindful of who we are representing and also know we are going to be held to a higher standard. Fairly or unfairly, it is what it is. So be thoughtful about your comments. And for those who disagree, file your complaint with the good Lord. He can handle your opinion. You are free to launch your protest. He knows it before you utter your dissent. Keep in mind his standards are fixed. And he's not interested in redefining standards, laws, to meet your individual needs or moral platitudes. Um, he's perfect. He's just, he's holy. And so we'll, we'll start with what does God think about the act of taking a life inside the womb of a mother? Now in the 20th and 21st century, this act is called abortion. And in our modern day enlightened culture, we would like to think abortion is a new and progressive issue it may surprise many that this practice of taking life from the womb as well as life from the mother was occurring approximately 2,750 years ago. As documented by the prophet Amos and by an unknown author in 2 Kings, now people, Jewish tradition suspects that was Jeremiah who wrote First and Second Kings. Um, but the point is, is we can't hide what God says on this topic. And there is nothing new under the sun. I know we like to think we're all fancy and 
scientific and technological and we're on the cutting edge of everything that's new and controversial and the reality of it is we're still people and they were doing these things 2,750 years ago and we may be a little bit more uh, sanitary about the issue dressed it up a little bit but it still is what it is and i think we're going to see that when we look at these examples uh these are the words inspired by the holy spirit of god second kings 8 verses 11 through 12 elisha fixed his gaze steadily on him until hazael became uncomfortable then the man of god began to weep why is my lord weeping asked hazael because I know the evil you will do to the Israelites. Elisha replied, focus on the word evil. You will set fire to their fortresses, kill their young men with a sword, dash their little ones to pieces, and rip open their pregnant women. And we're going to focus on the word evil. This is what God considers evil. Uh, and it's the, it's the Hebrew word ra. And the word means bad, adversity, or evil. The first time this word occurs in the Bible is in the book of Genesis. Genesis 2, verse 9, part B. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Good and ra in the Hebrew. The tree of knowledge of good and evil was the bearer of the forbidden fruit, So in essence, God is explaining to humanity, if you want to know about evil, you will experience evil. And God's instructions to Adam were direct and to the point. Um, You know, fundamentally, God's way, trust in his provision, God's provision, and to trust in that is everlasting life. And remember, when, when humanity was created, humanity was created eternal. Death had not entered the scene at this point. Uh, No decay. Things just, they existed. They were. They were to live. That was God's original intent. Now, as opposed to God's way, you can choose humanity's way. To know good and evil is death. Now, we had goodness. Adam knew goodness. God, God created everything, and it was good. Adam had nothing but goodness. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was there. And so it was a simple choice life and all its abundance as it was, or make a choice to know the knowledge of, of evil. And you have death and we get that from Genesis two, verse 17, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely eat die, death, eat of the tree of good and evil, evil equals death. So the choice is simple, life or death. Uh, And we're going to go back up, you know, the context again, our verses from 2 Kings 8 verses 11 and 12, we've we've established that what evil is um, per God's word. And there were four acts of evil Elisha told Hazael he would commit. And we got those listed here. One, set fire to their fortresses, kill their young men with a sword, dash their little ones to pieces. Those are infants and babies. If you look at the original Hebrew, that's the what's translated little ones. So it's babies. Uh, and four, rip open their pregnant women. And I know there's some legislation available now, or, and I've even heard some people making public comments that are discussing the, quote, viability of a newborn infant as to whether or not we'll have a discussion with the mom once the child's born, if we want to move forward with life or not. Uh, but, But make no doubt, God said there were four acts of evil. Taking life from the womb of a pregnant woman is evil. Taking the life of the mother is evil. Dashing and cutting babies to pieces is evil. It's murderous. Exodus 20, verse 13 of the Ten Commandments, you shall not commit murder. Um, And these are the words inspired by the Holy Spirit of God to the prophet Amos. Amos 1, verse 13, thus says the Lord, 
for three transgressions of the Ammonites, and for four, I will not revoke the punishment, because they have ripped open pregnant women in Gilead, that they might enlarge their border. So they're clearly repeat offenders. Three times, three transgressions, and for four. Multiple times this has happened. Um, They've taken the lives of pregnant women and taking the life inside the womb of the pregnant woman. So the the word for transgressions in the Hebrew, pasha, it can also be translated as rebellious acts. So transgressions or rebellious acts are defined by God because they have ripped open pregnant women in Gilead. God says this is rebellious, and God says it's a transgression, that being ripping open, ripping open pregnant women. And there are consequences for the Ammonites. And because of these events, that would be ripping open pregnant women. God promises fire, a tempest windstorm. This could also be translated as a whirlwind or a tornado. Consider the Ammonites. That'd be modern day uh, uh, Jordan. They're inland. I guess it could be a hurricane moving on shore from the Mediterranean. You know, a strong wind. Um Tornado, whirlwind, straight wind, take your pick. God has options. Uh, And also their leadership would go into exile. We find that out in in Amos 1, verses 14 and 15. That's get the consequences from there. But scripture is clear. God does not approve of the act of taking life inside the womb of a mother, and God does not approve of taking the life of the mother. He is pro-life, straightforward. He's pro-life. And I find it fascinating. Uh, This is a side note. My wife and I were having this conversation regarding the Ammonites. Understand where the Ammonites come from. The Ammonites come from Lot and that sordid affair with his daughters coming out of Sodom and Gomorrah uh, under the guise of trying to preserve his offspring, his line. They got Lot drunk, had sex with him, and the offspring are, are from incest. Yet God preserved those folks through time, and God will ultimately preserve them uh, in the final analysis of it when he brings together the sons of Ammon, modern-day Jordan, Egypt, and Israel together in the millennial kingdom. So, you know, the argument we hear in today's world about having an abortion secondary to incestuous relationships, God preserved that. Life is life. Uh, and I know that's a tough pill for people to hear and swallow. I get it, but just, just think about these things and fine. You want to call me ignorant, whatever, but it says what it says, it says what it says. And I think my wife stated it well, there's no hiding from what God has to say on this issue. And he allowed it to happen and something that wasn't good, frankly, he, he will take it and something good will come of it and eventually. Um, now as far as sin goes, there's, there's no sliding scale of severity with God. You know, abortion is no worse of an iniquity than any other sin and it's humanity. It's man who has redefined, ordered, prioritized, which sins are worse, not God. A sin is a sin is a sin is the idea. And also remember all that we see in our world, death, disease, pains, suffering, hard labor, environmental changes. They came into being because a forbidden piece of fruit was eaten. Uh, Yes, climate change was brought about because of sin. So if you folks on the left, take that into consideration. God agrees with you. Humanity is destroying its environment because of our choices. So you guys are actually pro-God. God takes any sin seriously to the point of death. Sin is sin. Uh, James 10, 2.10 and 11, for whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not commit murder. If you do not commit adultery but do commit a murder, you have become a lawbreaker. So you're still guilty. And I find it interesting in light of this conversation. You know, the reality of it is uh, there have been some unwanted, unborn pregnancies that have come about because of adultery 
And then the response to that is God would see it, you know, to take that life would be murder. Um, so there are the two issues right there in front of us in James 2. And, and again, let's be real. We're all sinners with many different issues. You know, some of us, we struggle with all kinds of different things. Some of us are liars. Some of us are cheaters. Some of us like to steal stuff. Some of us are murderers. Uh, some of us covet. I'm not even going to address the ones in regards to God. Uh, Cause I realize there are some people out there who don't believe in God and that's fine. But for those who do believe in God, you know, the, the commandments against God are first and then the commandments about how we relate to each other, uh, compromise the back end of the 10 commandments and, the reality of the, the Ten Commandments, it's about how we treat each other. How do we relate to each other? Do we steal each other's stuff? Are we nice to each other? Are we violent toward others? Do we covet others' things that they have? Do we want to steal things from people? Um, we all got all kinds of dish issues. We all got vices. Some of them is sex, some drugs, some alcohol. I mean, the list goes on and on. But the point is, is we're all guilty. It doesn't matter. We are all guilty. And the end result of the sin is the same regardless of what it is. It's death. Romans 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We, there is a solution for all of these issues. Uh, and we're going to touch on that to close. But before we get there... Um, the topic of abortion has brought a tremendous amount of pain, suffering, and regret to many, including unborn victims, moms, dads, grandparents, families, and friends. The topic has been polarizing and divisive for close to 50 years in the United States, and just clarifying that that topic is Roe v. Wade. Now, obviously, there were some things going on before that, that, that brought about Roe v. Wade and, and, you know, access to abortion in a quote, safe, uh, medical environment. But this, this topic, it's ripping and tearing the fabric of our society. And, you know, in closing to the body of Christ, to fellow believers, this is an encouragement for us to offer the grace of Jesus. We have been afforded in spite of our sins. You know, he still loved us and he forgave us and he accepts us where we are despite all of our shortcomings with his death on the cross. He paid for those sins as well as the sins of the rest of the world. And, you know, this, this is accurate. This is harsh to hear, but believers in Jesus are accurately accused of pointing fingers and judgment and condescension to those who are suffering in matters regarding the issue of abortion, as well as many other sins, whatever they may be. And we just need to be considerate and sensitive to the hurts of others. So grace, mercy, and forgiveness. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. So life or death, what's the choice? Um, appreciate everybody taking the time to listen to this. Uh, any comments, please please keep comments civil and respectful toward each other. You know, as a society, we've, we've got to learn to civilly disagree. We're so, so polar in our thoughts. We can't even listen to anybody anymore. It's just crazy. But we need to learn to start listening to each other again. And we can disagree with people. It's okay. Uh, and fundamentally, you think about it. I mean, there are close to 8 billion people on this planet. We're not going to agree with everybody. And we got to figure it out. Um, we're not on a good path right now. But anyhow, if you find this interesting, feel free to share it with others at paulthepoke.com. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, type your email address in, hit subscribe, receive a notification every time we put something out. Uh, typically I don't get involved in social issues. Uh, the bulk of this, uh, website is dedicated to prophecy and we got some Bible studies that take place once a week. Currently we're focusing on freedom in Christ. 
But any of these categories in the far right column, click on any of these. We got articles going back up to 12 years, going back to 2010. So if you're new to the website, welcome. Uh, I hope this has been thoughtful and considerate and uh, respectful in its presentation. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you all taking the time. Take care. Bye.